Welcome to Lessons in Life and Love with Rihanna Milne, where we show you how to have the positive mindset for success in all life areas so you can grow beyond difficult transitions and evolve from those challenging moments that may have influenced your past but will not define your future. It's time to have the life you desire and the love you deserve as we teach you the exact skills needed to attract and keep a lasting, emotionally healthy and conscious relationship. Now, please welcome your host, certified life dating and relationship coach, trauma professional and best-selling author, Rihanna Milne. Hello, everyone. Welcome to show 15 of Lessons in Life and Love. Tonight's topic, newest trends in nutrition, health, and fitness. And I have an amazing friend and guest coach with me tonight, Lindsay Martinez. And we are have so much to cover, so I'm really excited to get started. As you know, I'm your global certified dating, life, and relationship coach, and certified clinical trauma professional, and the number one best-selling author, Coach Rihanna Milne, known as the Life and Love Transformation Expert. I'm on a mission to change the way the world loves. And I hope you, my listeners, my angels of love and love transformers, will help spread the word on how to have conscious, loving, and respectful relationship. This educational podcast airs every Monday from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern Time and helps women and men of all ages to heal from past childhood adverse events and abusive relationship trauma or difficult life transitions that impact them today in both life and love. You can learn to transform a negative fear-based mindset into a positive and purposeful, conscious and evolved mindset to achieve success in all life areas. No matter your age, whether you're straight or LGBT, if you're single or in an exclusive relationship, you can have the life you desire and the love that you deserve. If you want to meet with me personally, then just apply for a free Life and Love Transformation Discovery Session. It's a $500 value. Just go to my website, rihannamillen.com, and fill out the pop-up form. Tell me your story, and I'll see how I can help you best. Now, let's get started. And remember, if you hear something you know will benefit a friend or a loved one, Please be an angel of love and share the show link and listen to the other shows located on boldbravemedia.com. You can also find us on iTunes, Spotify, iHeart, TuneIn Radio. And if you do listen, please rate and leave a comment. And always reach out if you have questions that you would like me to answer on the next show. So let's get going. Hi, Lindsay. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you so much, Rihanna, for having me on the show. It's an honor and a pleasure. Thank you for taking the time to be with me and our listeners. Let me tell you, everyone, all the accolades that Lindsay has. She is amazing, and she has so much going on for her. Lindsay is an award-winning executive producer, host, and the creator of the Happy, Healthy, Stronger Makeover, currently airing on WBTVN on Apple TV, Roku, NBC, CBS, ABC, and more. She's a nutritional therapist and a celebrity personal trainer and the founder of the wellness company, HHS TV. She's a published author featured in publications such as Lifestyle Magazine and Women's Fitness and is one of the top 20 fitness and health influencers currently in pre-production for the TV series of Prime Time airing 2019. Lindsay continues to arm her listeners, viewers and followers with the knowledge to live a happy, healthy, stronger life. She's also the CEO of the Athletic Clothing Line, Body on Fire, debuting this winter. And she's made it her life mission to educate, captivate, and motivate her listeners, clients, and viewers with their life to feel ridiculously alive. You can find her on Facebook under Lindsay Martinez and her website, lindsaymartinez.com. Okay, Lindsay, you've got so much going on. It's so exciting. And I always enjoy working with you. We've been friends for a few years, and we've been on each other TV shows. And it's nice to have you back on my radio show. And there's a lot of new trends going on, and I'm so glad that you're here to talk to us about them. One of the biggest things I would love for you to speak on, what is intermittent fasting, and how does that work? Is it healthy for us? What do you suggest around this topic? You know, it's very interesting. A lot of people are asking that. That's part of my 30-day program that I have people do. It's actually not a trend, and it's hard for me to discuss when people put it in a trend point of view because it's actually it's ancient in its coming, and it's also just being recognized now as something that is so good for your health. A lot of people doing it to lose weight. It is actually the very best way to actually burn your own fat, and here's why. It's very interesting. 
what happens is your body is always working on a carb cycle. For example, you're always burning glucose and using glucose to make ATP, which is our energy source, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're always using that, then you're never using your body resources unless you're under like an extreme deprivation of of calories. And you don't really want to do that. You want to live your life and enjoy your life, right? So what you want to do is you want to utilize a different system. Instead of the carb or glucose burning system, you want to utilize your own fat and make it a fat burning system. And this is how it works. What you do is I call it the 18 hours on and the it's a 16 hour window you have. So for example, you eat for eight hours and 16 hours you don't eat. And that says, oh my God, am I going to starve? You know, everyone right. thinks, how do you not eat that long? Well, if you think about it, what happens is if you go to bed and you have your last meal at, say, 8 o'clock, the next time you eat is 12 o'clock and you're like, oh, my God, I'm missing breakfast, which we'll get into in a second. But okay. let's discuss on why that works, okay? For example, very important to understand how your body works with understanding how intermittent fasting works. When your body is using glucose, the glucose cycle, you actually 100% never use anything in, of your own body fat. So we understand that one, right? Mm -hmm. There's two hormones in your body. There's growth hormone and then there's insulin. Insulin is a fat storing hormone. And growth hormone and, other, and five other hormones are fat burning hormones, with growth hormone being the largest one. Growth hormone can never, ever be present in the presence of insulin. And anytime you need anything, insulin is present. So it's very difficult to use your own body fat. So keeping this really simple and not chemical, when you have that time that you don't eat, you give your digestive system a major break, which is, increases your longevity. But what it does is it says, oh my gosh, I have no ATP. Some people get really tired at first, but once you start getting into that, your body says, I have nothing. How do I make this? I have no way of getting glucose in my body. So your body produces glucose by burning uh, in your liver, you have two hormones in your body. One is insulin, right? Mm -hmm. And the other one is growth hormone. And growth hormone happens to be the largest or the strongest of the fat storing hormones in the system. And it's the most prevalent one. The key is that growth hormone cannot be excreted in the presence of insulin. And this makes it really hard to lose weight unless you're starving, as we're going back to that, right? And mm. nobody wants to starve. So right. your body's making energy from ATP, and that's what makes the glucose. And when there's none present, your body goes, oh my gosh, what the heck is happening? I need to produce energy. So your body actually turns your fat cell into energy. Your fat is contained in a cell and your cell opens up and the fat spews into your bloodstream. It's converted into your liver, into ATP. And that is how you're burning your energy. Now you're actually living off your own body. And if you can do that, it just goes to that little window. It's the best way humanly possible to lose fat. And it also makes you feel amazing. And the window that you're eating, and this is the key with intermittent fasting, when you break the fast, which is breakfast, right? But it doesn't mm -hmm. have to be in the morning. It's just associated that way. When you break the fast, you always break it with something green, right? It doesn't mean you can't sit down and have mm -hmm. something green, something that detoxifies your body. So say spinach in your salad that you have with salmon, but you eat the spinach first, or a green drink doesn't mean right. that four minutes later you can't have your food but that's the first thing that enters your bloodstream and here's why and this is how you ensure that this absolutely 100 percent works for everybody your fat cells in order to be spewed they have to be clean around your fat cells are where your toxins are stored if you put green in there first green is very detoxifying it's going to flush your system out allowing the sludge around your fat cells excrete. So when your fat cells need to be spewed, it easily is spewed into your bloodstream if the toxins are cleared. That's why people say eat clean. This is why. If you eat clean, it's very, very simple to lose weight. And if you add the intermittent fasting, your fat cells can spew even faster. So it's a very fast way to lose fat. And you also don't have to so much worry about your caloric intake as much as you do about your timing of when you eat what you 
to eat. Mm -hmm. I heard try not to eat after 6 p.m. So it's 12 hours to 6 to 6, and then another six hours is about noon. Uh, And then I thought there was like a four-hour window where you're supposed to eat, maybe four to six-hour window, like noon to 6 p.m. You can eat, and then you just stop. Ashley, that is the extreme of intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting, especially on the female, can be 14 hours and and that 10 hours. I suggest 16-8 for a very fast benefit. Now, once you get used to intermittent fasting, your body has to adjust. This is a cycle that most people don't go into. Most people don't go into that fat burning cycle. Most people have never been into it. It's a sluggish system. It takes a while to get into. It also depends on how toxic your body is. So you may feel really depleted if your fat isn't able to be spewed into your bloodstream and converted into your liver as ATP for energy. So it may be a very sluggish system. If you go into the 18 hour and the six hour or better yet, the 20 hour and the four hour of eating, Mm -hmm. you may feel lightheaded, dizzy. You're going to, you're setting yourself up for failure. So the 16 hour, the 16 to eight is the best way to start it. And if you feel fantastic and you still have more weight to lose, you can definitely bump it up, but you want to bump it up in increments. Otherwise, it can be definitely dangerous, in my opinion. And also, you're setting yourself up for failure, and nobody needs to do that. Right. So it is safe. I didn't hear the first thing that it should be a green, like a green shake or something like that. That's good to know. It does have to be something green so that detoxifying, it will detoxify the fat cells that your toxins are stored. So you want to detoxify that area so that your fat cells can open up and spew the fat into your bloodstream. That's Mm. just the way the body actually works. Now, followed by that, you have your protein, and followed by that, you would have your protein and your fat together, actually. And after that, you can have a carb, say quinoa, or just something very complex, so that you can uh, have that carb last. (laughs) Because we're not saying don't have carbs, but you want to have the carb after you're already full with the fat and the protein. That way you eat less of it. People make the mistake of eating the carb first and they're starving and they get very full on carbs and it's the wrong macronutrient to get full on, especially if you're doing it this way. Right. I've heard of chlorophyll, like green drops in your water to have that first thing in the morning. Have you heard anything about that? Yeah, chlorophyll is a blood cleaner. It's what's in all of our greens. So it's definitely good. But I always suggest that you have the actual food. You know, there's so many things that you can get through uh, pills and whatnot, but you don't know how it's made. You don't know the clarity. Things say it's 100% pure. Honestly, it's just really good to have the food. And the food has the roughage. You know, when it's a whole food, you've got everything. You've got the fiber. You've got the everything in the food that makes it good for your entire body. Sometimes it's great to have that as a supplement, but again, supplement means an added to, not in place of. Got it. Perfect. What are some other weight loss tips that you feel are essential for people to know? There are some simple things that you can actually do that will decrease your caloric intake daily tremendously. And they're so simple that people don't even think of it. They automatically just want to be on the diet. And that's not the way to do it. If you diet, again, you're setting yourself up for failure because a diet just is every once in a while or for a period of time rather than creating a lifestyle, which is forever. Mm -hmm. The first one is a very simple one. You have to drink more water. And here's why. I was like, oh, yeah, water. Most Americans are walking on dehydrated. Even if you're never outside, like we are in the hot Florida sun, you're walking dehydrated. Your body is comprised of so much water. And if you are just getting your water through food, which most people do, you're not having is that your weight paralysis. You know, so if you're not having a certain amount of water that your body needs, then what happens is when you're thirsty, you're going to be hungry. So thirst is often masked by hunger. And that's a really key ingredient to decreasing your caloric intake daily because sometimes when you're really, really thirsty, your body says, oh my God, I have to have an apple or I have to, which is not bad, but I have to have some sort of food, especially if you're not eating fruits and vegetables because your body needs to absorb the water from the food. My suggestion to everybody always, and they always end up losing weight from it, is to have a glass of water before you go into your craving not your meal, but your craving. And then mm-hmm. before you go for dinner in a restaurant, have a glass of water and you'll be surprised how much less you end up eating. Another thing with the Diet Coke, right, it's a whole other topic, but a lot of people say, I have to have Diet Coke, I have to have it, I have to have it. If you have a glass of water prior to that also, that too is a way of getting rid of bad cravings that you have. Yeah, we definitely want them staying away from Coke and Pepsi and diet stuff as well. Yeah, but the drinking of the water really does change your caloric intake. And plus, you're doing your body a world of good. 
Yeah, I agree with that. Perfect. Do you have a couple more? Oh, I have so many more. <laughs> okay, so here's another one that you always think of as something that, of course, sounds the, the reason why is so much different than you think, actually. But getting enough sleep, right? And it says, oh, if I have enough sleep, I'll feel better. If you have enough sleep, you will not crave simple carbohydrates. It's a very interesting thing. When you're really tired and your body actually has to stay up, you're forcing it to stay up, it is going to go for the simplest gas in its engine, something that it does not have to work because it's tired to break up like a complex carbohydrate really has to take a while to break up as well as a fat or a protein. You don't crave those things. You crave breads and chips and cookies and muffins and pretzels. And people usually go for those things because mm -hmm. those are in the pre-digested state prior to even digesting them. Your body has to do nothing with them. And what ends up happening, especially if you're tired, you're having those to wake you up. But you're obviously somewhat sedentary because you're tired. And even if you're not, you're not going to use the amount of simple carbohydrates in your bloodstream unless you're going to go run a marathon or you're fully exercising full out. And what happens at that point is insulin comes in. And again, from our first conversation, insulin is a fat storing hormone. And mm -hmm. if you're not using it, you're storing it. It is the fastest way to gain weight ever. So if you get enough sleep, you will not be tired. Your cravings will be almost diminished. So eight hours, seven hours for some people, eight hours is really optimal. You will have a far less craving schedule for your day and everyone's schedule. Everyone has it in the afternoon and then late at night. Those should be diminished if you get a proper amount of sleep. Great. I always try to get my clients to do that to at least eight hours and try to make it regular you know, go to bed at a regular time and wake up at the, about the same time because the body likes that regularity. Yeah. And also it's very good for your mind. It's good for so many different things. It's great for your hormones. It's good for healing. All your healing happens when you're sleeping for the most part. It's great for serotonin levels. It's just a really, really important factor to get enough sleep. But as far as diet is concerned, it's exceptionally important to have sleep so you don't crave and you don't end up eating those simple carbohydrates that really pack it on on places that you don't want it. <laughs> perfect, perfect. What else do you have? Okay, so my golden rule, Brianna, is never, ever bring it home. <laughs> so do you have to be perfect? No, there's not, there's not such thing as perfect. Perfect is boring. We want to create a lifestyle. And, and right. if you eat yuck most of the time and occasionally you eat well, well, Rana, this does absolutely nothing. It really doesn't. Yeah. So people think you had a salad. Oh, I had a salad today, but I have a, you know, a McDonald's at night or whatever. Uh, it mm -hmm. does nothing in your salad, to be honest with you. So very fortunately, the opposite is true for those people who think they have to be perfect. If you eat well most of the time and occasionally you eat yuck, guess what? That too does nothing. So you can have a lifestyle and not a diet. So let's like put that into, into practicality. So you and I are going out, we're on a diet and you, you and I go to a hockey game and you've been on a diet for four days, right? This is the mm -hmm. diet way. Mm -hmm. And you're at the hockey game and you're tempted with the diet Coke or the Coke that I'm having and the pizza and the pretzels. And you're like, you know what? Forget about my diet. I am just going to have this and I'll start my diet on Monday. What happens to that person? That person is the person that's going to binge and have maybe four slices of pizza the next day and wake up. I'm starting my diet on Monday, so I'm going to have everything I want to have and start it again on Monday, right? They start right. on Monday, the next week, and the same thing happens. And it's a yo yo, and it's horrendous for your system, number one. Number two, and most importantly, in your mind, you, you set yourself up to feel like a failure every time. I yeah. failed, I'm going to start again on Monday. We don't need to do that to ourselves. Now, here is the lifestyle, okay? Same scenario. You and I are out and you feel like I'm watching what I'm eating. I eat really well during the week. And mm -hmm. Friday night, we're out. We're at a hockey game. And I want a piece of pizza. I have the piece of pizza. I eat one, maybe two at the most. And then I eat normal again. This would be right. nothing. But people say, oh, I ruined it. And then they binge. <laughs> uh -huh. It's really, really important to have that mentality that you don't need to be perfect. It's actually kind of good to carb cycle and add some stuff in once in a while. And you know what? Most importantly, we are on this planet once and we need to enjoy our lives. True. So it's really good to enjoy having once in a while. As long as you're good most of the time, enjoy yourself and don't give it a second thought. Don't hurt yourself. Mm -hmm. I like that. Okay. Uh, any other diet tips to help people maintain? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, to be honest, really important to not shop hungry. That's a really easy one. Mm -hmm. You know, if you shop hungry, if you bring a list, always write down what you need to make. Uh, and, you know, it's a little time consuming, but it does save 
you know, the pounds on. And it really does because when you go shopping and you're super, super hungry, unfortunately, you're going to purchase things that you would not have purchased. And then when you get home, you're eating those things or you're eating them in the supermarket. <laughs> I've seen some people do that too. Uh, but those are things that you don't need to have in your home because, again, remember the golden rule. It doesn't belong in your house. If you want it, you have it out of your house, which is fine. If you want ice cream, it's like my kids, I have three kids. If they want junk, absolutely, I never deprive them. But they have mm -hmm. it at dessert in a restaurant every once in a while. Or they have it when I want to go for ice cream. We go for ice cream, but we do not have ice cream in my house. If we do, my daughter has it for breakfast. So it's oh. not happening. So, yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah, they're young. They don't get it. How about to help with cravings? To help with cravings? Yeah. Yeah, to help with cravings, it's really important to be satiated at a cellular level. And what that means in lay terms is that when you are craving a vitamin, and say you get your vitamins from four to five, you say cereal, a lot of cereals are fortified with vitamins, right? And a lot of vitamins come from different foods that are, again, fortified like bread and whatnot. If you are deficient, your body is so intelligent that you're going to crave wherever it is that you are getting that nutrient that it's deficient from. So, for example, somebody who's craving Fruit Loops and gets all their vitamin C from Fruit Loops, it's really that simple. They're going to crave a bowl of Fruit Loops. It's the way the body works. It's like, and the best example of that is a pregnant woman who is deficient in minerals actually smells the dirt. It's called pica. It's an actual, you probably, you probably know more than I know about it. Okay, so pica is a actual syndrome, I would imagine it would be called. Uh, not a disease, because it's only during that time where women who are pregnant, because that's usually where the mineral deficiency comes in, crave the eating dirt. They don't eat it, but they crave, they actually salivate. It's an involuntary action, so you know it's mm -hmm. real, that when they smell dirt, because it's so mineral rich that they need it. Now, that is a true credibility to what I'm saying. When your body craves a certain vitamin, it craves the food that it's getting from. And if you are eating yucky, that's what it's craving. So if you eat really clean and you have those green drinks, like say cold pressed green drink or a smoothie that has tremendous amounts of vitamins and minerals, and there's so many places out now that are doing it right and have that. My goodness, let me tell you, it's usually green though, something green. Your cravings and your caloric intake will be so diminished when you feed yourself at the cellular level. You won't even notice right. that you're not hungry, you know? Uh -huh. So you won't yeah. be, when you crave something, it means that either you're giving yourself too much sugar and you got to need to detox from your sugar. The sugar has the same receptors as cocaine, so it is addictive. Mm -hmm. Or you're not hydrated enough, so you're craving water from your food, or, which is why I tell you to drink. Or you're simply malnourished and your body's going to do whatever it can to get it from wherever sources that you've taught it that it gets it from. Okay, great, great. All right, let's go into some weight loss myths that you think should be busted. What are some of the myths? Okay, you're really good. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, you know, one of the biggest ones that I have a problem with with my personal clients is they're afraid to eat fat. And I'm sure you've heard that too. Yes. You know, you're very fit. So, you know, way back when, it really was the Heart Association coming out with, that's where it stems from, with fat is bad and you need to stay away from that. You want to have you with whole grains and whatnot and, and all these complex carbohydrates. That's where the shift happened. And funnily enough, that shift was not the American Heart Association. That shift was the food industry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very interesting. And what happens is fat was being blamed for people getting the fatty deposits in their arteries and for having heart attacks and dying and whatnot. Right. And unfortunately, way back then, people came out with fat-free foods, which were really, really super high in simple carbohydrates, but it didn't matter because it was fat-free. When you compromise the fat, you up the sugar. When you compromise right. the sugar, you up the fat. That's just the way the industry works. Fortunately, that proved to be very wrong. And I say unfortunately because so many people had the wrong idea and suffered and in many cases, you know, aren't no longer with us, right? So the idea of having fat is so important in every process of your body. Your body needs fat to survive, absolutely survive, to think you need fat. So important, but the right fat. I'm not talking about deep fried food here. I'm talking about avocados, seeds, nuts, oils. Those type of things are, that's how your neurotransmitters are made from those. I mean, it's really, really important. And what's really super important to know is that the product of putting too many simple carbohydrates in your body 
is elevated glucose levels, and the elevated glucose levels lead to elevated insulin levels, uh, which leads to diabetes, which leads to heart problems, and also mm-hmm. that's what causes your the, the issues with the clogging of the artery. So it's really, really important to arm yourself with the knowledge to do it right for yourself and take care of yourself. You really can take care of yourself. Let's just put it that way. Now, the fat has, is an added bonus because if you picture a, a pearl chain, because I know we're not visual, but if you picture, picture a pearl chain, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Each and every one of those pearls on a chain or on a rope, those are a lipid. When you swallow a fat like that, what ends up happening is your body has to liberate each and every one of those pearls, and then it converts it and you use it. It's a very slow process, but it's a process that leaves you full until the process is finished. Now, if you have a simple carbohydrate, that is pearls, not on a chain, not on a, on a rope or a thread. You swallow that, they're already liberated. Your body instantly has energy. Anything it's not using instantly has to be cleaned up by insulin, which is a fat storing hormone back to that. Mm-hmm. And within an hour and a half, you are starving again. And it could have been the same amount of calories as the fat. Within three hours, even four hours, you're not hungry because your body is taking its time to digest it. And these are the key things that people need to know in order to lose weight. You must increase your fat and you must so decrease the be amount of simple carbon. Avocado, olive oil, coconut oils, uh, nuts. What else do you recommend? Yeah, seeds. All the different kind of oils are usually good. You know, the natural oils. All the different kind of nuts are wonderful. I do stay away from peanuts. I like yeah. to stay with raw foods. It's much better to eat the raw than a roasted or stay away from the candy covered ones. Those are, yeah. those are cheap, <laughs> but it's very important to think for avocados. Some people are sensitive to them, but you know, you, olive oil is great. Again, cooking with these oils really does kill them. So you want to have everything raw and almonds are wonderful. Again, raw, and, but these are really important. And I'm a firm believer. If you're vegan, you're going to find this somewhere else. I do believe that it's very important to have some animal fat in your body. And if you're vegan, it's very important to find that kind of fat, you know, elsewhere, like in avocados and whatnot. So it's okay to have either way is okay, I think, for a lot of people. Um, I'm not a big steak fan for me personally, but I uh-huh. don't see the problem with having clean. So that's another topic. But then that's a, a very good source of fat as well. You know, when you're talking about different I mean, kinds obviously of Obviously, if they're going to have meats, it should be, you know, free range. Sure, it's all natural, uh-huh. no chemicals, you know, trying to be as yeah, chemical like, free as possible. Oh, 100%. Uh, it's really, really important to do that. And it's really important to only have it once in a while, not have it a lot, especially if you're talking beef. I think it's really important to stay in the leaner meat like chicken and, you know, if you eat chicken uh, or seafood, fish is my all-time favorite, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's loaded in omega-3s and whatnot and all the omegas. And it's just, it's just you got to get that again, not farm-raised. Check your levels of farm-raised because now there's stages of farm-raised. If you look in Whole Foods or different places, you'll see they have different levels of cleanliness, I like to call it. You just have to be very careful. You have to be watchful. No one's looking out for you at this point. You need to look out for yourself. The industry still sells cigarettes. And we know yeah. that is dangerous, you know, and you have to very much look out for yourself in restaurants because they want you to come back because their food tastes good, not because they're making you healthy. And that's of no way putting anyone down, but you know, that that's what their livelihood is based on. So you have to be really careful and be very picky everywhere you go. Just because it looks like it appears to be healthy does not necessarily mean that it is. So you can ask them, you know, I want this dry. I want, you know, this without that and be picky and don't be embarrassed to be that way. It's your body. You only live once. Yeah, I hold part of one of the tips are, and this is something that I do consciously and, and notice that I do, is shopping at a market, you're mostly shopping around the outside of the market, not the inside where all the junk food is, or the fattening foods. I had something that's called the God diet, eat what God provides. What did he provide for us humans? Fruits, nuts, berries, instead of milk from a cow, like coconut milk or almond milk, fresh fish, not farmed fish, fish from the ocean, lower level animals, which would be organic chicken or turkey. You know, this is something that I follow and it seems to work fairly well. Is that a good tip? Is that still something that people Yeah, no, absolutely. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. You know, I say stick to Mother Earth, same thing. I would mm-hmm. say stick to Mother Earth. Yeah, the perimeters around the shopping <laughs> the grocery store are always the best for sure. 
You still have to watch, though, because they want you to purchase. So you still have to watch and read the labels and read, you know, when you're at the meat counter or the fish counter, read where your food is coming from. It's very important to look on your fruit where your fruit is coming from because their FDA regulations are completely different. You know, you're getting some product of another country. you got to know that they're allowed to use some serious pesticides that we're not. So you mm-hmm. want to try and say, I mean, it's very important to read. Even fruits and vegetables on the outside, you got to be a, a very informed consumer and just a very uh, aware consumer. doesn't mean you have to get a PhD in it, but it does mean that, you know what, you kind of want things, that's why I say is if you're in Florida or wherever you're listening, you want to kind of stay where I'm going. The less it travels, the better it is. <laughs> that's what yeah, I say right. too. Close to home as possible. And really organic is not a fad. It's not a trend. It's really, really important to have that organic component to it so that you know certain things are missing like GMOs you know you want to look for that it's a whole other topic that we won't get into but you want to look for a bunch of things that that make it as natural as possible and not you got some of these huge grapes I don't know where they're coming from but they don't exist <laughs> you know what I mean know, right. you think about it before you purchase it you know so <laughs> they are huge you got it yeah and you look the cotton candy grapes these finger grapes some of these grapes are just and that's just one uh, one fruit that I'm picking on some of these things just don't exist and they're created, they're man-made. And when they're man-made, they're man messed And we just mm. want to stick with things that are not genetically changed so that it doesn't, it's got to be put, like you said, God put it here. We take it as God put it. Right. Important. So look for organic, look for fresh. There's been a lot of controversy about dairy, that dairy can be bad and put on a lot of calories. Do you know anything about that? Yeah, well, for me, if we let's just break down dairy for one second, right? I nursed my children. I have three children. I nursed them all. In order for me to actually provide milk for my child as a human being, I had to have a hormone that was present in my body that came from me being pregnant, right? Mm -hmm. And when my children were done, I no longer was able to produce any milk, right? Right. Mm -hmm. I feel so sorry for these mummy cows that are producing milk for their entire lives, there's no way that they're not supplemented with hormone in order Mm -hmm. to keep that milk going. It's impossible as just a living species. So no matter what kind of dairy you're getting, there's no way that there's not hormones going on here. It's impossible. So, and again, with constantly milking a cow, there's constant infection, which means antibiotics. Even though it says antibiotic-free, I don't know how that's possible. For me, that's the number one thing. Milk is for baby cows. Yes. They're not baby cows. I agree. Milk is also, for me, that's the major controversy. And I do believe that calcium that you actually get from milk is not as valuable as the calcium and the, the mineral calcium that you get found in the green leafy vegetables. It's not as valuable. It's very, very important. You also, if you go to countries like Africa and Asia, yes, they're different, but they have the lowest level of dairy consumption and they have the lowest rates of osteoporosis. Whether that's a valid con- uh, mm. comparison or not, it's, just, it's interesting to see that. Now, calcium, you know, everyone's saying you have to protect your bones, especially women going through menopause and whatnot. It's really important to know that actually vitamin D is the most vital one to protect your bo- bones. Uh, And that one, more so than calcium, and that one must be uh, checked by a doctor. FYI, I always see this when I'm interviewed because just on a tangent for a moment, vitamin D happens to be a fat-soluble vitamin, which means that it is stored within your body. So there's a toxicity level. So you have to find out if you're actually deficient, which no matter how much sun you possibly get, I don't know if anyone has seen me, but I'm exceptionally dark skin. I Mm -hmm. run outside, I swim outside on a regular basis, at least three, four hours a day, and I am deficient in vitamin D. (laughs) That's all I'm saying. Yeah. So I'm yeah. like, what? Come on. A lot of us have a low level, right, of right. vitamin D. It also no. helps regulate sleep, and it also helps the natural vitamin to help keep depression away. Believe it or not, a lot oh, of people know in vitamin D yeah. are depressed. Yes, you have to do it via a doctor. You have mm-hmm. to find out where your levels are, and most people will find that they actually are deficient. Most people do, especially with depression. They'll find that. It's, I think it's a common thread, to be honest with you. Yes. Dairy consumption is, it's also really, and this is an interesting, it's very, it's been known to, or seen rather, to increase the levels of your, the insulin-like growth factor one, which is a known cancer promoter. There's some really weird things with dairy that I stay away from. I don't ever do dairy. 75% of the world's population are unable to actually genetically 
digest milk and other dairy products. They, they're lactose intolerant. Even mm-hmm. just a little bit, that protein that goes around and it messes within your system, it can cause diarrhea, it can cause irritability, it can cause feel like you're well. It's just something that we actually don't need to have in our body. That, you know, everyone's calcium, calcium, calcium. There's so many other ways to get calcium. A lot of people find, Rihanna, when they do get off the dairy, they find mm-hmm. improvements in their sinus or postnasal drip things like headaches or, you know, irritable bowel syndrome even. Uh, yeah. Your energy comes back and, and, you know, it really helps you when you get off of it if you have any sort of, you know, which most people do, uh, it helps with weight loss. So, so a good you know, alternative are the nut milks like coconut or almond milk? Yeah, but almond milk is, for me, almond milk is, uh, check to see how much almonds is really in your almond milk. It's, almond milk is a very interesting concept because if you read the back of almond milk, it's really like not very many almonds in almond milk. It's just, it's contrived. So pea protein okay. milk is phenomenal. That's a really good one. Soy is something we stay away from. Right. That's important. If you can get a good almond milk, just read the back. Just be a concerned consumer, an educated consumer. Read the back. Make sure you understand the words that are in there. If you don't, don't buy it. You know, yeah. and if you have to have dairy, only use the raw dairy and the organic dairy. Fermented is best always. Anything fermented is great for your gut, you know, your gut health and, and lowering your inflammation which inflammation is the root of all diseases, so you've got to be careful with that. Mm-hmm. But you get calcium from dark green leafy vegetables. You can get it from like tahini, sardines, salmon. There's a tremendous amount of ways to get the, what dairy gives you, that calcium, and it's just so much better for you. Really, and always consider the source. Too, and I think it's a myth that you, to get proteins, they have to eat meat red meat or whatever. And I said, no, there's a lot of proteins in vegetables. Absolutely. There's a lot of proteins in a lot of different ways. You do have to have a good amount of protein just in order to lose weight, in order for all the processes to happen in your body. It's, it's really important to have protein. And, you know, animal protein is not the only way to get it. And nor is it if you're a vegan or a vegetarian. You just have to be careful. There's a lot, nuts have a ton of protein. You have to make sure that you get a good amount and a good amount that's actually usable for your body. Perfect. Let's go on to fitness a little bit. You've been so informative. I love this. What some uh, um, rules do you have for people for fat burning exercises, fitness, everyone's there, they don't have time to exercise. What do you suggest for the busy entrepreneur that's working tons of hours and barely gets to the gym? Well, you know, if you barely get to the gym, you can do something at home. And it's really important to know that you've got an entire gym. If you walk around your house, you can see it. <laughs> I can point it out. <laughs> if, you, if you have a staircase, guess what? You've got a gym. <laughs> so it's really, let's just preface this with this. If you are overweight or feeling yucky, the very first thing you need to do is to address your diet. If you can do the two together, that's fantastic. But if I were to have to pick one, it would be very, very important. And 75%, if not 80%, to address your diet. It is the key. You are what you eat and you really are what you eat. You mm-hmm. don't want to be hot dog. So it's really important to do that. Now for fitness, if you do not have time, you <laughs> what's amazing about that is you don't have time. People are always tired. I have no time. I can't do this. Fitness actually... <laughs> If you take the time and struggle through and take the sacrifice it takes to start a fitness regime, I can promise you that the sacrifices that you make, like giving up an hour of your time to rest and watch a show in the beginning, or the soreness that you're going to have, or waking up an hour earlier, or staying an hour later, those sacrifices will very, very quickly be turned into something that makes you feel ridiculously alive, something so crazy that you'll have more energy than you ever thought in your life and you will never feel that way. However, if you never start and you never sacrifice, I can promise you that you will feel like that for the rest of your life and that rushed and that feeling like you don't have energy to do everything and that you're exhausted all the time. Energy is made from energy. So Mm -hmm. if you work out, you're going to require less sleep. Not initially. Like I said, you're going to require less sleep. You're going to all of a sudden have this energy from working out, the thing that you think is going to exhaust you and make you feel insane throughout the day. I require about six hours sleep. I don't even know if that's a requirement. I probably say about five. When I don't exercise, I need eight. So it's really important to understand that when you exercise and you let your body drain and detoxify, you know, the bouncing up and down is lymphatic drainage, you create an amazing amount of energy for yourself that you'll be less tired. It's counterintuitive Mm -hmm. to understand that. And you have to go through the sacrificial portion of it 
and you have to stick with it. But most people don't stick with it. They get exhausted before they allow that to be lifted, if you will. What is the the amount of time that could work? I heard like 20 minutes weight bearing and 20 minutes cardio. Like you don't need to be in the gym for two hours to get benefits. Oh my gosh, no. Well, you know what? That's a very interesting question because different people get their stress relief from different things. Like cardio is really important for your cardiovascular system. That's why they call it cardio, right? You Mm -hmm. want to get everything moving. You want to get your heart moving. And weight training is very, very important for your bones if you're older. It's for the weight bearing aspect of that for weight loss. So the two combined, as you suggested, are very good. I would say 20 and 20 minutes is wonderful. It's an amazing way to do it. Now, you can also get your cardio throughout the day and do weight training if you only have 20 minutes to spare. Now, cardio throughout the day would be, instead of taking the elevator, and it's, it's, everyone said this for, how old is this statement? Take the stairs, it's but it's scary. real. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's real. It's stairs. It's really important to do that. Walk if you can at your break. Don't go sit down. Go walk. You'll find that the sitting down actually makes you more tired again back to that concept than going for a walk and actually revitalizing yourself. Again, counterintuitive. If you're tired, you rest. If you're tired, if you get up and move, you'll actually have more energy. It's really important to think like that and just give yourself a little bit of time, like three, four weeks of doing that. And all of a sudden, you're going to want it. You're going to want more. You actually crave it. You're actually going to want to do more because it's making you feel better. That's why people say, oh my God, she's a fitness nut. You get addicted to it because of the way it makes you feel. Mm -hmm. And how many times a week should people be exercising? At least every other day, three days a week, four days a week? Now, this is another place where people unfortunately set themselves up for failure. When somebody says, you know, it's New Year's, a resolution that I'm absolutely 100% going to exercise and I'm going to lose this last 20 pounds and they end up exercising every single day. (laughs) <laughs> and then by two weeks, guess what? They're burnt out. And right. that's a, even if they did five days a week, they're, I promise you in one month, they're going to burn out. And again, they're going to feel like a failure. And that's really, really important to love yourself and not feel that way. I say the maximum to make yourself and expect from yourself is three days a week. Anything extra, pat yourself on the back and say, woohoo, I okay. did something more. And if you did seven days a week, and pat yourself on the back. If you did four days, pat yourself. But three days, say, you know what? I did it. That way, there's no way that <laughs> you go wrong. Three days helping your and body and your brain, for sure. Yeah, yes. But I have to tell you, though, really, really important that the food is a constant. And that's a lifestyle change and not a diet. Right. Okay. I heard, too, about this I guess it's a trend about apple cider vinegar. I know it's an old family remedy. Two tablespoons in a glass of distilled water with a little lemon juice does work and helps burn fat from the body. What do you think of that? That's been out lately and I've used it. I think it really works. (laughs) What do you think of it? Well, no, you know, apple cider vinegar has been used for, it's in history. You have to make sure you use the raw and the unfiltered one, which is kind of, it makes it look kind of murky or cloudy. Everyone doesn't want to pick that one up because vinegar is supposed to be clear. You got to make sure that you get the raw and filtered one for it to get the maximum effects of it. It contains a really good bacteria, good for your gut. It's loaded in minerals and enzymes. It, it's a great. And then when you combine it with the distilled water, which I don't agree with having distilled water all the time, so you got to be careful with that. Distilled water means that it's missing an electron. Uh, and so when you swallow it, it pulls out vitamins and minerals it actually attached to it and you, you get rid of it instead yeah so I, yeah but you can use the filled water once in a while because it definitely does help detox but all the time you don't want to leach yourself of any important vitamins or minerals because that's that's a pull distilled water is the pull and people make a mistake by having that all the time it's not, okay. a, it's not a good thing to have all the time but once in a while this formula of having you know eight ounces of water uh, apple cider vinegar, and of course, raw and unfiltered, and lemon is wonderful. It detoxes you. It actually does assist in weight loss because it does clean you out. It's got enzymes. It's, got, it's high in potassium. Potassium is really important for your heart function. It boosts your immune system. It's really good for pH balance, which is really important for your health. It's good for your skin. It's good for acne. It's good for your digestion. And it helps to reduce your appetite, which is really good, and helps burn fat. It's a <laughs> wonderful remedy. And you know what? You can't go wrong with it because it's food. Right, right. It also really helps with inflammation and came back from a cruise and I was walking a lot in hot weather and my feet were swollen, my knee was swollen. I came back to my apple cider regimen once in the morning and then once before bed and it was gone in two days. 
and the no pain. Oh, no, yeah, the knee, it was unbelievable how it really helps mm-hmm. with an inflammation and, and soreness. Great. Really, yeah. It does. It helps your body, your immune system boost too. It's just all around. It's good. And I love this one in particular. And I'm glad you brought it up because anybody can do this. There's no yeah. toxicity levels. It's just food. The lemon is the pH balancing factor because the lemon is actually acidic, but in your body it's alkaline, which is really important to be alkaline. But you do have to be a little bit careful as it may interact with some of your medications or your supplements. And it does for some people because, you know, it does go down rough. It feels, uh, it can get a bit nauseous from it. So mm. just, as long as you're aware of those things, those are the only things you have to be aware of. But I have never heard anybody doing anything or ever using this and not feeling great from it. I think it's wonderful. And yeah. people say, oh, it's a myth. It's a myth. It's, you know what? I lost if anything easily yeah it really worked well for me yeah. i did the intermittent Sorry? fasting and then added the apple cider vinegar with the water and the pounds just fell right off i didn't need to lose a lot yeah, like no, five absolutely. Pounds, but it was just gone in a few days it's great yeah but see the difference with yes and the difference with doing a fad diet like the cookie diet or those diets you know you don't that, that's water weight that's what you're seeing on the scale when mm. you do an intermittent fashioning and you detox with apple cider vinegar and lemon and water you're losing real fat that's a huge difference so water weight maybe eight pounds and you lose five pounds of fat well you're going to look a lot thinner with the five pounds of fat because that's a very large amount of fat um, it's you know, right. fat is almost two times the size of a pound of muscle i would rather lose it that way and you look different and it's way healthier it really helps you know actually helps a little bit to reduce the cellulite it's just it's very smart and it's, and it's you, so Lindsay, simple this is crazy i just tried also some collagen powder and a drink i wanted your take on that because it says it helps with skin joints and smooth cellulite i have no cellulite and i'm 60. And I'm shocked because I had it, you know, not a lot, but some of it, most of my adult life. So I don't know if it was a collagen powder or the apple cider vinegar. What's your take on it? Or maybe both of them together. Collagen powder would be the major culprit for that one. Collagen is like the most abundant protein in your body, right? And it's available in your muscles, in your skin, your blood, your bones, your cartilage, your ligaments, and so on. So it is so important and it diminishes as you get older. It breaks up. It does whatever. If you're taking that, to be honest with you, that is probably where you're getting your ease of joint pain. That is tremendous. It also reduces inflammation. It can reverse like um, your skin aging. There's a lot of products that are right now like there and a lot of other products right now that are using the collagen. You have to make sure it's the bioavailable one that's not too large because you know protein molecules can get really large. You have to make sure they can assimilate in your body, right? You just have to read it, read it, you know, educate yourself again on what's good and what's not. But it, that really helps to reduce the cellulite and that improves your digestive system. It's so wonderful. It promotes skin elasticity and as we get older, especially when you go through menopause, you know, your elasticity, we, it's, it's fallen. It's definitely, definitely going <laughs> south. And there's tremendous amounts uh, before and afters that I've seen with people that I, that I work with that I give collagen to. The difference is amazing. Yeah, um, and it's it holds together your bones like and muscles. You put it in a drink, a yeah, hot tea, a water, and it's just tastes like nothing. Yeah, that's like the vital proteins. Yeah, that's like the one that dissolves. Yeah, it's really, really wonderful. Uh, it protects your organs, man. It's really smart. It's a very smart supplement. You know, it provides structure for your joints and your tendons. So that's what you're feeling, I bet, more than the apple cider vinegar, which is more of a detox. This is more of a protective mechanism. You're giving your body something that is actually that's leaching out and getting, uh, you're getting older. Not you, but you, as we, everyone ages, this is the one thing that, that, you know, doesn't continue to age with us. This is the one thing that gets diminished, you know, as seen in your skin. Everyone's skin starts to fall. Yes. So this is a tremendous way to save some money on a facelift, too. <laughs> that's good to hear, right? Hey, that's so no, far it's, it's working, so I'm going to stay with it. There's three simple changes in my life has really retoned and rechanged my body from the intermittent fasting to the apple cider vinegar and the collagen added. It's not a whole lot, making sure I have an avocado every other day for healthy oils a little coconut oil if I have a protein shake, making sure I eat organic. So it doesn't have to be really difficult for people. You know, it's just a few simple things can be added to make you feel pretty terrific. Yeah, and it's really important to understand how your macronutrients work in your body if you do have to lose some a little bit of weight. If you were to up your fat and up your protein, especially your protein, you will find a tremendous, a tremendous way to lose weight. And that, again, with your intermittent fasting, if you keep your protein up, it's, and your fat, the, the weight loss is, is simple, it's easy, and you don't have to starve. 
Exactly. And then a few days of exercise a week. Guys, three days, Lindsay said. Three. You can do three. <laughs> Four is even better, but aim for three, 40 minutes. It's, it's not like you have to put two hours in the gym. These little changes can make you feel fantastic. Right. And the diet is the number one. Absolutely number one. I agree. One. Yeah. Wow. You're so informative, Lindsay. Thank you so much. Was there anything else uh, that you wanted to cover with us today? No, I think we covered a ton. <laughs> we we covered a ton. I just commend everyone, yeah, everyone listening to this and taking care of yourself. I mean, the only one thing I'd want to say is that it's just to give you a little kick to start this is, you know, people say, oh, I'm feeling so good. It's okay that I have McDonald's once in a while. It's okay that I smoke. It's okay that I do. I still feel amazing. I remember running a marathon and having somebody beat me. And when they came up to me, I mean, several of them said, you know, I beat you all the time and I'm a smoker. I'm like, come see me in 10 years. You know what I mean? And what I, what I want to say with that, and just to light a fire under some of the listeners' tushies, that, you know, disease has an incubation period. And I'd like to give a visual of having an egg inside of your body. And all the stuff that you're doing that is really not good for you is being contained in this egg and it's being cultivated and incubated and churning and getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And you're not feeling the effects of anything that you're doing at all because this egg is not hatched, if you will. But there's a breaking point now. There's a breaking point for all diseases. They incubate for, I don't know how long, say mm -hmm. 10 years, 5 years, 20 years, whatever it is. And especially over 40, some of those eggs are going to be cracking. When that egg cracks, it's a live, breathing, destructive disease within your body. And if you get to take care of yourself while you're feeling great, and you can reverse that whole incubation period to actually disappear or to completely reverse itself. So that it never does hatch. And this is the mistake people make. They start treating themselves yeah. well when they actually find out they have something going on. It's mm -hmm. the wrong way to do it. It's the same you know, thing. I talk a lot about childhood trauma and the studies show from the Kaiser Permanente group out of San Diego that those that who do nothing about alleviating the anxiety and the trauma response in the brain and the body, the disease comes out in their 40s, 50s, and 60s from this ongoing high cortisol, high stress, not feeling happy yeah. about life, not taking care of themselves, turning to food or carbs to feel better. Disease is caused by inflammation. And you have to start taking care of yourself in these small ways, but they all add up. It's the same as the trauma response. You've got to get rid of it. You've got to do something about it, not just let it sit there and hope it goes away. Right. I there, the last reading, and I think it lends into this, it's called the, From the Daily Informations from Raquel Lerner for Adult Children of Alcoholics and People of Trauma. I'm capable of making changes in my life. I can change the situations or I can make changes in my own beliefs, thoughts, or behavior. As I look back over my life and see the mistakes and bad choices I may have made, I sometimes wonder whether I will ever be able to change this pattern or failure to one of success. I know that unlike other creatures in the world, I was given the ability to modify my program. I can't change the past, but I can change my attitude about the present and the future. When I experience emotional discomfort, I will learn to listen to my feelings. I will identify the source of discomfort. I will see what needs to be changed, and I will take the steps to relieve that discomfort. If necessary, I will end relationships that cause me pain. I will not tolerate situations that create turmoil anxiety, despair, or any toxic interactions. I will not remain locked in any relationship, place, or frame of mind that jeopardizes my health or my serenity. Change is necessary for growth, and I am capable of making changes in my life. With that last lesson, I want to inspire you all to take this wonderful information that Lindsay Martinez has shared with us today. Um, she is a wealth of information. Make sure you look her up on her website, lindsaymartinez.com, Facebook, and it will be in the show notes as well. But she is wonderful. Keep an eye out for her new TV series called The Prime Time. It'll be airing in 2019. And Lindsay, I want to thank you so much for joining us today. You, you gave us so much great information. Oh, thank you for having me again. It's an honor and pleasure. I absolutely adore you. I always have. And thank you for having me on. 
Sure, sure. So, okay, I love Angels and Transformer. That is all we have time for today. Next week, we will be starting the Mindset for Success series from my book, Live Beyond Your Dreams, Getting Beyond Anxiety and Depression. But join in every week. And I thank you for coming on, Lindsay, again being with us and please share the links give it a five-star rating on the platform of your choice again we're in spotify tune in itunes iheart tune in radio we're all over the place lessons in life and love thank you and just keep sharing it and joining us each week on boldbravemedia.com and you can send me your questions at lessons in life and love show at gmail.com and reach out for a free life and love discovery session during the week at my website, rihannamilne.com. Okay, Transformers, join me next week, 6 p.m. Eastern Time on bbmglobalnetwork.com. And as always, I am here to help you have the life you desire and the love you deserve. Have a fabulous week and God bless. We want to thank you for joining us on this episode of Lessons in Life and Love with Coach Rihanna Milne. Your personal journey of life and love transformation has only just begun. Go to RihannaMilne.com for more resources. And if you're really ready to take action to improve your life or love situation, apply now for a free life and love transformation discovery session with Rihanna, a $500 value. Just contact Rihanna with your questions and to tell her your story at RihannaMilne.com. And remember, it's time to have the life you desire and the love you deserve.